All right, our next speaker is Mauricio Santos Vega. Today I'm going to talk about all the things that we do in my group back in Colombia. And I'm going to talk about simple models to incorporate behavior dynamically in the models. So, well, I don't need to say this in this audience, but well, these systems are these fantastic complex systems where you have like variation across scales and multiple factors affecting the, the transmission patterns. So you can have environmental factors affecting the transmission. You can have intrinsic factors such as immunity, but also you can have behavioral factors affecting the, the transmission. And this is where I'm gonna focus today how behavioral changes could affect transmission. So you can think in linking two systems, the behavioral system and the disease system, and you first can think in the effect of disease dynamics on behavioral dynamics, so it's risk perception, how you perceive your risk and how you evaluate your risk uh, based on the sick people that you see around. And those changes should immediately affect the disease system. And so far, all the epi models that we have tend to overlook these dynamics. So all the simple models that we have, they loosely incorporate those dynamics, and the ones who incorporate those, you increase complexity really fast, so you end up like in these aging-based models uh, easily with a lot of parameters, and if you want to study the emerging dynamics of these uh, factors, it's really hard with these like, high complex models, and if you want to fit models, well, ask Alex who fits uh, these kind of models. It's quite, quite non-trivial. So our idea was like try to develop this theoretical framework to couple disease transmission with behavioral dynamics, focusing on how risk awareness or how infection awareness modulates dynamics. And then I'm gonna show some of the things that we're doing currently, to, trying to extend these to other type of diseases, vector-borne diseases that are the ones that I work mostly. So this started with, I would say three years ago, with my former, former student, Jaime Cascante, that must be somewhere in the audience. And our question was, can we build a toy model that dynamically couples behavioral dynamics and disease dynamics? And we came with these ideas that basically we have the disease system expressed in this SIS model, and you couple that dynamics with the behavioral dynamics. Then you can think in people deciding between two strategies. It's the same as a prisoner dilemma where you can cooperate or deflect. In this case, you can think in use your mask or not use your mask, or how I'm gonna uh, show later, store your water or not in a vector-borne uh, disease. And the interesting part here is how we model the behavioral dynamics. Well, you can decide between two strategies, and each strategy, as a prisoner's dilemma, you have uh, a payoff for, for each of the strategies. And you see that in, that in those payoffs, we discounted that value G in each of the strategies that are like deflecting. Well, that's a cool thing because that value G is associated with the parameter sigma that is the infectious awareness. So the people can cooperate or deflect modulated by that awareness parameter. So that's one link. And the other simple link is the more people cooperate in the system, the less transmission you have. So the transmission is co dynamically coupled with the number of cooperators in the system. And we were like looking to see how the fraction of infected people is modulated by that awareness parameter and by transmission. So you see that for low uh, awareness values and high transmission, you have a higher uh, fraction of infected people. But the, more in the most interesting part here is the behavioral dynamics. If you see 
for high awareness values and high transmission uh, values, you see the emergence of cooperation in the system. It's something that you don't expect in a prisoner's dilemma. You always expect that when you run the game, you end up in everyone deflecting. So when you add, dynamically update these matrices, you have the emergence of cooperation in the system. And if you think in, in terms of awareness or how you evaluate the, the risk, you can evaluate the risk in two ways. So you can evaluate the risk locally. So basically, the risk is evaluated based on, the, on your contact network or the people that you interact with. Or you can evaluate it globally. You can think in, in the way that you uh, have information from the social media, from the news, and you know all the number of infected people in the system. So we implemented our framework on a network, on a scale-free network, where people evaluated the risk locally, just based on their uh, interactions, or you have the access of the information of the whole system. And again, we run the same simulations. Interestingly, same pattern emerges. As you increase awareness and transmission, you go or you see the emergence of this uh, cooperation in the system. And if you have a global uh, way to, or a, a global evaluation of your risk, uh, the dynamics uh, emerges faster. So, yeah, when you have some structure in the network, you see these this, uh, patterns emerging. But now the question was, what if we play with, topology, with the topology of the network? Well, we play with different topologies, a fully connected network, a grid network, and when you change the topology, your patterns disappear. So, yeah, awareness, it's a really important parameter and modulates transmission and modulates uh, behavioral dynamics. But you need certain contact structure to those patterns uh, uh, to show up. So that was a really interesting idea. And we wanted to, oh Jesus. <laughs> uh, we wanted to extend to the system that we're working in in Colombia, to aids born diseases and diseases that are transmitted by um, uh, it is a GPTI, that it's an urban mosquito, and this is from the paper that was accepted that Talabi already mentioned, and you have a myriad of factors interacting, but one of the interesting patterns here is that this mosquito breeds in built environment, and it's associated with how the people manage the water. So this uh, ideas that I'm gonna present now are based on the observations that Palavi uh, collected the data and analyzed. And if you see sort of like the vector distribution and the larvae distribution of the city of Iwage, well, there is a lot of like special heterogeneity, but more interestingly, if you see the different containers that uh, you have larvae in this, in the different households, all the washing basins in, within the households are the ones who exhibit the higher larvae, larval density. So it's a human modulated uh, system. And to confirm that, my student Simon Levy run these entomological experiments you, where you have like these washing basins and you can consume the water in a different way. So you can not store water or store like a tiny bit of water. You can consume the water really fast at a medium pace or really slow. And we measure the larval densities in each of those treatments. And interestingly, the story is a little bit more complicated, but if you just focus, the one, compare the, one, the, the two different circles, you see that not storing water compared to storing water half a difference is in the number of larvae in the system. So the mosquito dynamics, uh, it's associated to these two uh, strategies, storing or not storing. So we extended our framework a little bit more. So now we have, again, the same coupling with cooperation and infectious awareness, but now we have two extra effects. 
So you, if you have more mosquito in your houses, you are gonna have like some mosquito awareness. And if the people cooperate and not store water, you have an effect on the birth rate of the mosquitoes. So th those are the equations. We just added an, an additional term in the matrices or in the payoff matrices. And we com when we compare which of those uh, effects the vector awareness or the disease awareness has a stronger effect, we saw that the vector awareness in this system plays a higher uh, or has a stronger effect in the dynamics. And again, if you see the fraction of cooperation, as you increase disease awareness, you still see this coexistence between the two strategies. So it's the emergence of this cooperation through disease awareness. So just to wrap up, well, social dynamics uh, play an essential role in the dynamics of the disease. Uh, and specifically awareness, uh, it's this parameter that like, tend to modulate transmission dynamics. I have to say that so far we have in the models this, this parameter awareness, but we need to understand mechanistically what awareness means. And we need approaches or dynamical approaches to incorporate those, those uh, behavioral components in the models. And when you start to think in data or the kind of data sets that we need to parameterize and feed this to the data. So with that, I want to say thank you to Palavi, Maria, who was also involved in this project, and my two students, Jaime and Simon, uh, and all the funding sources, and my research group uh, back in Bogota, Colombia. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for one or two questions. Um, I was just wondering, so why does network effects, why does the network structure affect the global risk awareness? Um, so how does the global risk awareness work such that the network structure can have, effect, uh, have an effect on it? Okay, so the way that it, this effect uh, is operating is basically you evaluate your risk based on the number of infected people that you see. So the local effect is like, it's, the on, the, it's evaluated based on the number of infected people that actually you have in your network, in your contact, uh, in your vicinity. The global one is basically evaluated based on every infected people in the system. So you know all the, you assume that you know all the infected people uh, in the system. So, but then, it, but then presumably network structure doesn't affect the number of infected people in the system. So why is it different when you change the network structure? Why is it different? We believe that, that the dynamics are like, play, like it's hap they're happening like too fast in the two networks that oh, we, we, uh, we pick. So probably that's, that's a mechanism uh, operating behind. Thank you. Quick question. Um, yeah, similar question in terms of um, delays in acquiring information or delays in, um, in information itself, what effect do you think that would have on the network structure or on, on um, how fast disease spreads based on how recent the information is? That's a phenomenal question. And so far, our effects are immediate. But you can think in, in, in kind of like created in the same way that we write models with distributed delays for, for the mosquitoes or for everything, we can write kind of like distributed equations to to capture that delay in the, in, the, in the way that you acquire the information. Thank you. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you.